Pumps outbreak, and this is kind of one of the common symptoms that you may see, kind of a swollen jaw or cheek. Today, officials confirmed they're right now looking at 108 cases of mumps that are under investigation in King County. We've got 11 in Pierce County, including one now in the Seattle Public School District. So what can you do as a parent or just a family member to keep uh, those around you that you love protected from mumps? Joining us now to talk about the outbreak is Dr. Rick Bowles with Pacific Medical Centers. Thank you so much. Okay. It seems like every day, we tune in and there is another mumps case. So let's kind of go over the basics for people. First of all, what is mumps? So mumps is an interesting disease. It's actually from a virus. Uh, that's why it's tough to treat. But, um, you know, characteristically, it, you get swelling and inflammation of the parotid gland. So <clears throat> people often say you kind of look like a chipmunk. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, it can be one side or both. And if you get both, you really look like a chipmunk. Mm -hmm. But um, then it can affect not all of them, but many of them will. You can develop brain issues with it, like encephalitis, meningitis, that sort of thing. It can affect the ear, hearing, mm -hmm. so you can have some deaf issues. Sometimes the thyroid can affect the heart, and can even there's even pancreatitis that can occur from it. In boys, uh, it's kind of well known that the testicles can get inflamed from mm -hmm. it, and in girls, it can affect the ovaries. So some serious complications. Right. Who is most at risk for getting mumps? You know, generally it's the young population, and especially the population that is um, close together. So that's why schools, you know, dorm uh, dormitories, uh, any place we're t together. Mm -hmm. And it's spread, you know, basically with saliva. So you can imagine, especially a place with a lot of little kids mm -hmm. chewing on everything, right. you know, they've got stuff everywhere. It's so easy to transmit. It's pretty transmissible. So how concern, um, concerned should we be about this outbreak? Because as I said, we continue to see more cases. And I think the thing that's maybe most alarming for people is that many of these cases, the majority, have been vaccinated against mumps with the MMR. So how worried are you and others about this as it spreads? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good question because people have been trying to figure out why is it that a lot of the people who were vaccinated are coming down with mumps, not all of them. Mm -hmm. Um, and people, we aren't quite sure. I mean, some of it is, you know, first off, when you get a vaccine of any kind, none of them are 100% effective. You know, probably the mumps is maybe 85% effective. Uh, so you still have that small population that really, for some reason, didn't get the antibodies for it. Um, and then there's some theories about, are we, are they losing some immunity? Maybe they need a booster somewhere down the road. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's some questions about, is the virus changing a little bit? We don't know. How close are we to answers on those types of things? Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm serious. Um, you know, unfortunately, mumps isn't that common anymore, so it's hard to study it. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a lot of different symptoms. For, for instance, you can have mumps and not have the swollen salivary so gland. What are the other symptoms then? So you can, uh, the prodromal symptoms, symptoms that start before it occurs, is kind of like any serious virus, you know, you can have fever, chills, body aches and pains, um, headache, uh, you feel like tired. Symptoms. Yeah, that's yeah, and you just you think, usually okay, feel, right. common virus. We've got about uh, a minute left. Let's talk about some of the best prevention practices. So we talk about the vaccine that's not 100%. Is that still, still our first line? Still the best thing to do. Okay, beyond I mean, that, what else can we do to stop You know, stop just common sense, yeah. Since this is spread by saliva and, you know, body secretions like that, you know, washing your hands all the time, mm -hmm. and there's still nothing that beats soap and water by me. I mean, so those kinds of things, you know, in place where we got a lot of little kids, mm -hmm. you know, keeping all the stuff cleaned up that they're chewing on and so forth, it can make a big difference. Um, you know, just common sense kind of things. Yeah. Do you expect this to get worse before it gets better as far as the number of cases? You know, I don't really know the answer. Um, I think, you know, the big thing started, what, early December in Auburn, and it seems like it's been going down, even though there are still some sporadic cases here and there. Well, let's hope it doesn't. Uh, Dr. Rick Bowles, thank you for being thank here you. and for, for covering some basic information that is very important to so many of our viewers right now. Thank you. Matt? Yeah, top of mind for a whole